2022 has come and gone. It seems like it just passed in the blink of an eye. And with that, we got a ton of great movies this year. Too many to cover, in fact. So this is the point in the year where I'm making my top 10 list of the entire year. Now, I understand that still we have December coming up, and there's a lot more films coming out in December, including a certain film featuring some blue aliens that's expected to be one of the biggest sequels ever. So I will update this list when I do my Oscars review of the nominations, trying to like rank those films that are coming out in December. But I feel like I have a pretty solid list right now, so I'm going to rank those, and then I will update as need be. So let's just get right into it. Number 10 on my list is The Worst Person in the World, a film that I got the opportunity to see through the Sundance Film Festival this year. It was one of my favorites of the fest, and I have loved it ever since I saw it first. It's really just one of those films that you take a step back and appreciate it because out of all the rom-coms currently released, like in the past few years, this does everything right. I wouldn't consider myself a huge rom-com fan. I like the occasional, you know, Netflix cheesy drama here and there just because I like to like watch something fun here and there. But this hits all the right notes of what a rom-com should be. The plot basically follows a woman named Julie as she navigates a tough life full of many hardships and breakups with different love interests. And it's one of those films where it really is just a very complex character study. Julie is a very complex character and the people she is with in these romantic relationships are also complex characters. It's a kind of a discussion and a look inside of these relationships, seeing where both of the people go wrong and what eventually ends the relationships. And it really includes a lot of heartfelt emotional moments that really tug on your heartstrings, particularly towards the end of the film. And it also includes a lot of lighthearted comedic moments throughout too. It's in Norwegian, so keep that in mind. If you're not one that likes foreign films with subtitles, you probably will not like this film. But if you do like subtitles, please give it a chance. It's a phenomenal film, and I cannot recommend it enough. You stab me? Yeah! Yeah, we ruin your life the way you ruin mine. Dude, I don't even know you. Number nine on my list is Bullet Train. Now, this isn't particularly a very well-made movie. I think it's a particularly poor uh, filmmaking-wise. However, I'm rating these out of pure enjoyment this year. I'm throwing out my critic side and I'm giving in my audience member side. So from an audience member perspective, this was a blast. It's a very, very fun film on a level that if you shut your brain off, you can enjoy this thing. And I pretty sure you will. The plot basically follows a man played by Brad Pitt, who is a mercenary who finds himself on a train with other mercenaries, all trying to get to their final destination. This is a very, very fast paced and fun film. David Leach really knows how to shoot action. I mean, he came off of the Deadpool films. Of course, he knows how to shoot comedy and action together. And it just works. What didn't work for me about Deadpool works here. It's very similar in style. So if you like Deadpool, you'll love this movie. It's very, very funny. There are times where I was laughing my head off and other times where I was like in shock at some of the graphic violence on screen it's like it switches between the two kind of like randomly but it just works somehow i don't even know how to describe it it's just an amazing film it's very very fun i'd say it's like one of the best times i've had in movie theater this year so i would recommend it on that level i'm not bad side Number eight on my list is The Bad Guys. I saw this back in April and it has been a delight to me ever since. I have loved watching this movie over and over again. I rewatched it recently trying to like make up this list in my mind and I had as much fun as I did watching it the first time. It's a very, very enjoyable movie and one that you should easily check out. The film follows a group of animals who are all thieves who are trying to go after the greatest heist they have ever been on. It's a very, very fun film. Very, very comedic. I mean, some of the humor particularly does not work for me because I'm one who likes more clever based humor. And some of the humor in here is very, very childish. Do not get me wrong. I'm not going to deny that. But uh, on top of that, it's a very, very heartfelt exploration of like, do we really think people who are termed bad cannot be good? I think it's the reverse, but um, it's a very honest discussion. It's a very, very heartfelt film, and it's one that's really, really enjoyable for basically anyone, I'd think. This is a very accessible film. Uh, it's not one that's really particularly demanding of its audience. It's a very fun film. The runtime is short. The characters are all great. Sam Rockwell is just very charismatic as Mr. Wolf, and the rest of the cast does a phenomenal job. Uh, and it's just one of those films where if you can enjoy it on the level of like just going in and saying, oh, this is a fun movie. It's not going to be like a cinematic masterpiece. You'll enjoy it on that level. And I'm really, really hope you check this out. Number 
Giving your heart to somebody is the most perplexing thing. that you love somebody. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. Number seven on my list is another film I saw through the Sundance Film Festival this year. It is Cha Cha Real Smooth, which is now streaming on Apple TV+. Plus. When I first saw this film, I was in love with it. I fell in love with it. Cooper Rafe really just knows how to write conversations well. His scripts are so human and real and a like, sea of formulaic scripts with a lot of just like eh writing. It's just like it features some of the most real conversations you have ever seen in a film. Cooper Wraith actually plays the lead in this film and does a phenomenal job opposite Dakota Johnson. They are both playing middle-aged people who are trying to figure out what to do with their lives. It's a very honest, open, heartfelt film. It's one that really does not shy away from showing anything like gritty or real. Uh, and also, it's kind of just a vibe. The film really is just like this relaxing, kind of chill movie. Uh, it's one that really is just like heartfelt in a way. It feels more like emotional than other movies on this list. It's one that I wasn't expecting to like as much as I did, but I went in, I got out, and I was just blown away at the mastery behind the camera. And it's one that I would easily recommend to basically anyone. Uh, it could be inaccessible depending on whether or not you watch indie films religiously like I do. It could take some getting used to like the style and things like that. But other than that, this is a phenomenal film. I am looking forward to whatever Cooper Rafe does next because he is truly a master of filmmaking. Marcel, how long has it been since you've seen your family? I couldn't tell you, but a space in my heart gets bigger and louder every day. Hmm. Dean, do you know how long? That's two years. Two years. Yeah. Oh, that's nice to know. Number six on my list is Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, an A24 film that I saw this year, and I absolutely adored this thing. It is one of the most beautiful, poignant films I've probably ever seen. I'm being dead serious when I say that. The film, if you don't know, is based off the Marcel the Shell short films that were popular on YouTube. A, a woman named Jenny Slate made them. You may have like recognized that name from other movies. She's a very famous actress. And it's a very honest and open film. It's a stop motion and live action blend about a shell named Marcel who kind of lives through life in a house and uh, he goes on the search for his family. It's a very, very heartfelt film, one that I could easily recommend to anyone. It really just picks your spirits up. If you're ever feeling down, this thing can like, I don't know, comfort you. It's very, very heartfelt and funny. It's very, very comedic. Um... It's just like, it makes you laugh and cry at the same time. Like you'll be laughing at a Marcel joke that he makes. And then uh, the next moment you'll be crying at something Marcel says. It's like, it works on that level. It's like kind of a blend between the two. It's happy and sad. It's very, very, just very, very good. And I cannot recommend you see this thing enough. I have a bomb and I'm going to kill myself and everybody in here. My commands and I'm there. No, I feel like I've added too many Sundance films on here, but after looking at all the movies I've seen this year, it seems like there's like three Sundance films that I saw this year that are by far some of the best of the year, and I would be remiss if I didn't add them in my top 10. And they deserve these spots, don't get me wrong. This film right here was my by far favorite of the festival this year. I saw a lot of films at Sundance, but this one particularly impressed me on a level that none of the other ones could. It is called Breaking. When I saw it at Sundance, it was called 892. I like that title better. It's kind of like a hidden meaning. If you've seen the film, you'll know why it was called that. But Breaking's an okay title, I guess. It's just kind of generic in my opinion. The film follows John Boyega's character, Brian Brown Easley, as he walks into Wells Fargo Bank one afternoon and announces he has a bomb. What plays out in the next hour and 45 minutes is pure adrenaline pumping thrills and a lot of heartfelt and honest conversation that you can apply to the real world this film is actually based on a true story that happened a few years ago about an actual man and the actual circumstances surrounding him it's a very very emotional film too the ending features probably the heaviest cry i've had in a movie in a long time it's very cathartic but also very very sad and it's a very open and honest discussion and it raises an important discussion about how we really treat veterans in this country um no spoilers but if you've seen the film it's an entire plot point of this film and it really just makes you think like and realize hey we really do not treat these people with the kindness and respect they deserve they fought for our country and we're kind of just kicking into the curb and it's a really really eye-opening film on that level featuring an amazing performance by john boyega I, I would predict Oscar buzz, if I'm being honest. It's really that kind of performance. He commands every single scene he's in. 
you don't really realize you're watching John Boyega. You're like, oh my gosh, he's actually like this person. He kind of transforms into this character. It's a sight to see. Camera work is slick. The director is a first-time director, I believe, and she has a very promising future ahead of her because if this is any indication, I feel like her next few films are going to knock it out of the park. So I would highly recommend you see Breaking. You would be missing out on a fine performance and some great indie filmmaking if you didn't. It was by far my favorite of the Sundance Film Festival this year. I'm vengeance. What's black and blue and dead all over? Number four on my list is pretty generic, but you probably expected it at this point, but it is The Batman. Uh, I absolutely loved this film when I saw it the first time. I've started to like it less and less on more viewings, but I think I'm rating it based on that first time enjoyment. It is a phenomenally made film, both in front and behind the camera. Robert Pattinson's performance is by far one of the best I've seen of this character, and I've liked every single version of Batman that I've seen. I liked Christian Bale's too, but I think what I like about this is what him and Matt Reeves were able to do with that story. It focused focuses more on what Batman truly is deep down, which is a detective first and foremost. A lot of the other movie versions like to portray him as this like supernatural almost being that's like too powerful and always like fights bad guys and like wins every time. And this is not that. This is a more grounded, realistic approach on the character. It's like a detective thriller, a gritty detective thriller, which I loved the atmosphere. Paul Dana's performance as the Riddler is absolutely like mesmerizingly scary. It is just terrifying deep down. Uh, and the filmmaking to the cinematography, especially on that like roof dive scene, I was like blown away. I loved watching this in IMAX when it first came out, and I'm rating it off a of pure enjoyment that first time because it gave me this elated, like giddy feeling like no other. I was like transported back to being a kid again. I was like watching this hero like beat up these bad guys and like solve a case. I'm like, yo, this is epic. So I'm highly recommend you see this if you haven't seen it already. I'm pretty sure you guys have, but it is a phenomenal film. I cannot say anything else like good about that other people haven't already. It's just that good. Number three on my list is one that I didn't expect to like whatsoever. I walked into it knowing it was Kate Blanchett's amazing performance that was luring me to this movie and basically nothing else. I thought it was going to suck, I had heard it was long, it is another movie that's almost three hours, but I walked out of it stunned, and that film is tar. What I love about this film is how it subverts expectations. I walked into it thinking it was going to be a straightforward drama based on the marketing, and what I got was basically a psychological thriller inside the mind of a woman who was pushed to the brink by her work. It's a very fascinating discussion. I personally am very involved in music, so seeing all the comparisons to rehearsals and classes and all of that, it was like easy to recognize for me, and it made for a very good psychological thriller. I like kind of equate it to a black swan, but for like music people uh, instead of dance people, honestly, and it just works. Kate Blanchett's performance is impeccable. It is phenomenally done. I hope she gets best actress buzz. She deserves it. I think out of all the female actresses this year, she deserves the award the most and the nomination the most. I would see it for that performance, but also besides that performance, it's a very solid film filled with some great filmmaking, great acting from the other characters, and a real sense of paranoia and tension throughout the entire runtime. It's a very, very well-made movie, and I cannot recommend you see it enough. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Oh. I am pushing boots. You might have guessed it. Number two, Puss in Boots The Last Wish. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I already made a separate video that you can find up here somewhere about why this film was a masterpiece, but it is just so good. The biggest surprise of the year for me so far. No other movie comes close to the amount of like surprise I got that this film is that good. It made the number two spot out of like the 30 movies I've seen this year. I was like, how is that even possible? I'm not going to spend too much time. You guys know it's already a phenomenal film based on that video if you've seen it. I cannot recommend this enough. I keep saying that, but like all these films you should definitely check out, uh, definitely watch at some point because they are all just perfect examples of artistry of cinema this year and they deserve some recognition. There is no way I am the Evelyn you are looking for. Every rejection, every disappointment has led you here to this moment. 
the number one spot goes to Everything Everywhere All at Once, a film that really, really, I think, highlights something. And that thing is that every year I try to look for the film that impresses me and proves to me that cinema is alive and well. It feels like with all the formulaic projects that Hollywood is pushing out lately, it can kind of feel like hard to track exactly what makes a cinematic masterpiece what makes originality in Hollywood. And this film celebrates all that. It's one of the most original plots I've ever seen. And it's just such a good film overall, featuring a fine performance from Michelle Yeoh and a bunch of other cast members, some great action sequences and editing, cinematography and costumes are on point. It's a very emotional and heartfelt look at a mother and daughter's relationship mixed in with some awesome multiverse stuff. So I cannot recommend you see this enough. It is by far my favorite of this year of 2022. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this year's top 10 of 2022. As always, my name is Mitchell. Leave a comment down below with any movies you want me to check out. Please subscribe, like the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.